Safe Passage launched the Young Leaders Project at the beginning of 2020 as a platform for young refugees to speak out. In the first session, we're going to hear from Ruth Holton from Safe Passage. Thank you so much, Mary. Hi, everyone. It's really good to be here today. Um, and yeah, as, as everyone's been saying on the chat, really inspiring to, to hear from, from Alf Jobs there. Um, brilliant. Well, yeah, as Mary said, um, I work with Safe Passage um, and I run and coordinate alongside an amazing group of young people, um, the Young Leaders Programme, um, which, as Mary mentioned, um, kicked off kind of yeah in, at the start of 2020 um in the first couple of months of that year so most of what we've been doing with the group has been online because we really only had a few sessions with them face to face um and since then we've been meeting on zoom um but hopefully we can start doing things face to face again soon um and just to say as well um none of the young people could be here unfortunately they're, they're busy with college and their exams but, um, i do have a video that i'm going to show you shortly um, which is one of the, uh, our long-standing members of the group, Laura, who's going to be kind of talking about her experience with young leaders um, and yeah, her, her time with Safe Passage. Um, so, yeah, basically, just to give you all a bit, I think, I don't know if someone is talking, but I can hear a lot of feedback. <laughs> we have mute, please, from everyone. Thank you. <laughs> Um, yeah, so just to give you all a bit of an idea of what we do with Safe Passage, maybe some of you have, have come across us, um, and as um, Mary mentioned, we work very closely with our clubs um, on our campaigns, but we exist as an organisation to um, help people seeking, seeking sanctuary um, and with a focus on children and young people um, to access safe routes to sanctuary. Um, we do a lot of campaigning here in the UK. And as I'm sure a lot of you are aware, it's a really challenging time at the moment with um, a very uh, hostile environment and lots of policies um, that are going, yeah, that the government are wanting to introduce to make the situation even worse and to even further reduce the um, safe routes to the UK. So we're working really hard on that and doing a lot of campaigning and advocacy um, alongside our young leaders. Um, and what the young leaders need to do and their kind of objective as a group um, is, is to really, um, in whatever way they feel best and whatever tools they, they have and, and kind of want to do as a group, um, is to really lead that change and make that positive change in their local communities and nationally. Um, and what we do as a group is, is we have a lot of sessions that we have like skills based workshops. So a lot of things around public speaking, for example, filmmaking, um, uh, talking to journalists and the media. So we have a lot of kind of external facilitators who um, come in and, and um, share their learning and help the young people kind of learn from each other about those things. Um, but we also do a lot of kind of um, specific campaigns over a certain period that are as much as can be youth led and, and kind of participatory with the group. Um, and so I think, yeah, what, what we see as a kind of way for skills development is really that um, if we have a, a campaign that we work on, we'll kind of start from that moment of speaking to the group about how they want to go about it, what, how they want to get these issues out there, um, and how they want to, um, you know, what tools they want to use, whether that be um, creating a video, which I'm about to show you in a second, which was a campaign that the group did last year, um, writing a report, which is something that they've done more recently in response to the recent government consultation on their new plan for immigration. Um, we haven't isn't, isn't public yet, but hopefully will be very soon and we'll share it with all of you when it is. Um, so it's really about them deciding how they want to speak out about these issues. And, you know, the way that I've observed it is that then through that process of the group working as a collective um, and kind of leading on these campaigns, they develop their confidence and develop their skills in, in the process. Um, so it's really, I guess, applying what they're learning instantaneously and then learning from it and reflecting as a group um, so that when they come to the next campaign with us there to support them, um, they can think back to campaigns they've done previously and, and you know, how that will help them to, um, to kind of improve for the future and develop their skills. Um, so there's a video just to show you now, which is what the young people produced about this time last year, um, and it was all about family reunion. So this is just an example of something They've worked on together um, and they've learned a lot of skills in the process. So I hope that someone has that ready to share. <laughs> Perfect. Boris Johnson. Pretty Patel. Members of Parliament and the British public. 
we would like to introduce ourselves. We are young people working together to build a better future. We are fighting for our rights and the rights of refugees around the world. We believe in justice and that families should be together. Because family is the basis of society. And when people are with their families, they feel safe, happy and complete. But right now, there are unaccompanied children. Sleeping rough in refugee campus across Europe. They have risked their lives having escaped unimaginable danger such as war, conflict and persecution. Some of them have family here in the UK. It is vital to protect their safe and legal routes to reach them. Surely, reuniting a child with their family is the right thing to do. So what is the UK doing about this? Family reunification is a law designed to help children and young people to join their families in safe countries. This law also prevents them having to make dangerous and life-threatening journeys across Europe alone. But following Brexit, family reunion is under threat of being removed from law. If this happens, it will be much harder for children to join their families here in the UK. The act of fleeing war, violence and persecution will become a much more scarier and a dangerous thing to do. Nobody will risk their lives to take such a journey if they didn't have to. They had no choice. They have no choice. Have no choice. Refugees are the victim of the war, not the creators. So, where do you come in? Boris Johnson and Priti Patel. We want you to understand the risk that you're creating when you change this law. Come and meet with us for one hour. And we would love to answer your questions. Members of Parliament, talk to refugees in your community and ask them what do they think about family reunion. And when the time comes, vote to protect young people like us. Members of the public. The voice of people is the voice of power. Use your voice. Use your power. As Diana Nayari said, it is the obligation of every person born in a safe room to open the door when someone in danger knocks. So yeah, thanks for all the, the positive comments in the chat. Um, it was a, such a pleasure to work with the young people um, to create that film last year. Um, and I should say as well, you can see there at the end the, with the logos, we did that jointly with the Hummingbird Project and the young leaders who, who I'm sure lots of you will have heard of the Hummingbird Project, they're based in Brighton. Um, and I think that's another thing that has been such a strength of, of this movement of young people. And actually, especially during the pandemic has almost enabled us to do more like, joint projects with other organizations that are not necessarily in the same geographical area. Um, and that's been in a sense, a real positive that's come out of it. And I think we're gonna continue to, to collaborate a lot with Hummingbird and also, um, Cram, the Kent Refugee Action Network that we've done a lot of joint campaigns with as well. So, you know, with that video, they 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 wrote the script collectively on Zoom, decided how they wanted to word it and order it. We had a workshop where someone taught them some techniques on how to use their, their phones, their smartphones, with the lighting, the sound to kind of get them, um, you know, as good quality as they could just using their phones in their rooms. And then they filmed themselves and we put it together and, and kind of worked with them to make sure they were all happy with it and put it out there. So I'll, I'll make sure we share the link um, if it hasn't been shared already to the YouTube video and then everyone can, can share that far and wide. Um, but yeah, that's just one example of what we've done in the past year. Um, and now I'm just gonna hand over to Laura if we've got the second video. Um, she's a, a longstanding member of the group. Um, and I think you know some of what Laura says around how she's really passionate of helping other people that have had a similar experience to her really speaks to what we try to do as a collective around, I guess, mentoring kind of horizontally. So, you know, there'll be some people in the group who've been there for longer. And when we have new people join, um, it's really the longer standing members who, who kind of welcome them in and help to lead workshops themselves and really make new members feel comfortable. And, you know, it's a space where people learn from each other. Um, and I think it's really nice to have people, I guess, who have been 
kind of part of the group for a longer time and can kind of take a bit more of that leading role in supporting and welcoming new people. Um, so yeah, Laura is one of our, our longer standing members and she's just gonna speak for a couple of minutes now about her experience with Safe Passage. We haven't got sound. I think it's quite quiet, but maybe. A couple of years now, and Safe Passage has helped me since I am a newcomer before I come to the UK. It has played a big role in the part of me to arrive in the UK and to be safe. So, um, I'm really, really glad to be one of the members who work well with the uh, young leaders and uh, to advocate um, for others who are in need right now and uh, we need to feel safe because like others, we know how we feel, we know how it may um, affect you mentally, physically, uh, to be in a place that you are not completely safe and you feel um, incomplete without people that you love, your family. Um, so I really know how it may affect you. So I'm really, really glad to be one of, uh, one of the members of Young Creators um, who advocate good things for young children, for them to be in a safe place in the future. And uh, Young Creators has um, play a big impact because I've made friends, I have learned new things in general about UK, I have learned new skills, all this really has shaped my, um, my life and my social skills, so I'm really really grateful to be one of the member of uh, Young Leaders Safe Passage. And thank you everyone, and thank you Safe Passage, and thank you to Ruth and others who have played uh, big roles for us to be part of this group and to be um, a strong group that to work together in uh, everything that we planned to for us and for others who are in need. Thank you. Thanks to Laura for making that video. Apologies that the volume was quite low, but hopefully with the subtitles, people could follow what she was saying. Um, so yeah, thanks so much. I will post my, my links on the chat just for people to follow. And if anyone knows any young people who they think would be keen to get involved, we work with young people across the UK. Um, most members are in London and the Southeast, but there are other members as well in different parts of the UK. So there's more information on the website, which I'll share. Um, and if you know anyone who'd be interested and wants to sign up, they'd be more than welcome to join us.